Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show today called NG Ingwen. My name is John Drummond or Yang Haolin. Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到我们西平方的节目 NG Ingwen。我是 Angela。We have a great episode for you today with our good friend Brian, who's known around the Taiwanese community as Bu Lion. 是的，今天我们很幸运的邀请到了 Brian 布莱恩莱恩之英文，跟大家聊这个今年台湾第十八届的同志游行，以及一路走来他学中文的经验分享。But before we get to the interview with Brian and I. Angela is going to help us break down the meanings of LGBTQ that Brian is so passionate about here in Taiwan. Brian is a wonderful English and Mandarin-speaking ambassador for that community, and we just finished celebrating Pride Month here in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take it away, Angela. Here on NG Ingwen. 好的，没问题。这样，谢谢你的介绍。对啊，等一下呢，因为今天主要在谈跟十月底游行有关的内容，会提到跟 LGBTQ Plus 的相关主题，所以我们待会就带大家来认识一些跟性别、婚姻平权相关的用字。请各位赶快把 NG Cheat Sheet 你的 NG 英文笔记小抄准备好，我们要开始喽。这一连串字母 LGBTQ， 大家知道它个别代表什么意思吗？来，现在就给它一一破解。L 是 lesbian 开头的第一个字母，它代表的是女同性恋者，或者是一般说的这个蕾丝边。好，那 G 它是 gay 的开头，也就是男同性恋者。相信大家对这个字都蛮熟悉的。但你们知道它其实呢，还有开心快乐的意思哦。只是啊，这样的用法已经古老过时了。现在大家都是大多主要以男同志的意思为主。好，再来 B， 它是 bisexual 的第一个字母，意思是双性恋者。好，那这个字呢，我们可以把它拆两部分来看哦。bi 和 sexual。bi 这个字首 b i， 它有双两个的意涵在。那 sexual 意思跟性有关，所以把两个放在一起 ，bisexual 就产生了双性的意思。另外一个也是这样同样用法的字，还有我们生活中常见的脚踏车 （bicycle）。因为啊，脚踏车它有两个轮胎嘛，所以也是用了 “bi” 这个字首来表达“双”的概念。那尾巴的 “t” 则是跨性别者，也就是 “transgender” 开头的第一个字母。它字首 “trans” t r a n s 有跨越、转换的意思。那 gender g e n d e r 是性别，好，只是这边要注意哦，它这个性别啊，跟我们生理上的 sex 性别特征不一样，它指的是呢我们内心里面自己认为的性别，所以 transgender 意思就是跨性别。好，那假如是透过医学方式去变性的话，因为这样子呢，就是你去改变了生理上的性别嘛，所以我们要改成 transsexual。好，要注意哦。那最后还会再加上了这个 Q， 它代表的是 queer。这字呢，原本是用来形容奇异、奇怪的，后来才被衍生成不清楚自己性向、觉得困惑的人，也就是我们常说的酷儿。哎，那你说同性婚姻怎么讲嘞？来，我们先看同性，同样性别。好，这个相同的、同样的，我们可以用 same， S A M E， same。那这边性别因为指的是生理上的性别，所以我们用 sex 来表示，也就是 same sex。好，那婚姻是 marriage， 所以同性婚姻我们说 same sex marriage。这样子大家有了解了吗？希望刚才讲的这些对你的英文学习之路有所帮助。如果刚才有漏掉没有听到或是写下的，也不用担心，可以上我们的 Spotify 或是 YouTube 频道，随时要听几次。就改听几次，有什么问题也欢迎在底下留言，让我们知道哦。那如果大家都准备好了的话，我们就赶快进入今天的访谈内容，听听 Brian 的分享吧。All right, all right, all right. As always, thank you, Miss Angela Ma, for that wonderful NG Ingwen breakdown. My guest today is an American. However, he has been living in Taiwan for over eleven years now. He is an actor, model, entertainer, YouTuber. Ambassador for the LGBTQ plus community, host, translator, and so much more.
So everyone, please welcome my good friend, Brian. Hey there, John. What's up, Brian? Not much. How are you doing? I am doing well. It's some beautiful weather here in Taipei. Finally. Finally, right? And hopefully some beautiful weather for upcoming Pride, as we'll jump into that in a little bit. But I wanted to say welcome to NG Ingwen. Thanks. And I wanted to start with our first encounter together is when we were filming a, a new upcoming TV kind of historical drama called, well, it used to be called Kuelehua, but now it has since changed to Sakalu. You are an actor, you are a model, you're an entertainer, but what is your main focus within the entertainment scene? 访谈开始他们分享到啊,Brian跟John一开始认识的时候,是因为两个人呢都有参与公式的电视剧《傀儡花》或是叫做这个台湾组语斯卡罗斯卡鲁的这个拍摄。好,但其实呢,Brian他除
Well, um, about a year ago, I started my own YouTube channel because I had a month where I didn't have to work. And so I've just been doing that because after a few videos, I started getting some traction and figured, well, if there aren't as many TV show jobs that I can do right now, then that's something I can use to fill my time with. And at the same time, I can also share cultural things with the Taiwanese community. Beautiful. Yeah, so you are transitioning a lot right now to YouTube, and I think it's a beautiful time for that. So what are kind of some of the themes that you focus on with your YouTube channel? 前面有没有提到 Brian 大概在一年前左右开始经营他的个人 YouTube 频道。那在那个时候呢，他做影片主要是因为手上突然有多很多时间出来嘛，想说可以借这样的方式来跟台湾朋友介绍他的文化。但后来呢，为了要了解大家比较喜欢看什么样的影片内容，想说做一个这个市场调查，好，所以频道就走一个多元主题路线，影片所涵盖的主题就都还蛮广泛的。不过他说，总体而言还是比较偏向分享他的个人故事啦，或是像可能跟性别平权运动、跟这个同婚有关的内容。Um, at first, it was a lot more varied because I was still kind of feeling out what kinds of things people wanted to watch. But、um, generally speaking, it's like sharing a lot of my own personal stories as well as a lot of things that are LGBTQ related. Because、um, like starting last year when same-sex marriage was legalized, I, I started making videos about that because I thought it was something that not many people were really talking about. Beautiful, yeah, and that is why I'm so glad to have you on this week because I think you are a fantastic. Fantastic ambassador for the LGBTQ plus community. So you just created, I believe, a series with Adi. Is that correct? 相信有在听我们节目学英文的听众朋友，一定也都有看过阿迪英文的影片。那在这段访谈中呢 ，Brian 会提到之前他跟阿迪合作所拍的两部介绍性别平权以及这阵子同志游行的相关影片。他们有谈到我们刚才在前面讲的 LGBTQ 每个字母所代表的社群跟他们的意思，以及成人之美 Beauty My Own Way， 也就是今年台湾第十八届同志游行的主题。而且啊，他还是今年游行的其中一位活动主持人哦。Yeah, we made two videos, one for his channel and one for mine. On his video, we talked about the different groups in the LGBTQ plus community and the English names for each of the groups and what they mean. And then on my video, we talked about this year's Pride theme, which is Tianren Zhi Mei, Beauty My Own Way. Beauty My Own Way. Yeah, that's so wonderful. And like I said, I think you're a wonderful ambassador for this. And Upcoming on October thirty first, you are now officially one of the Pride Day hosts. So, how did you get involved in the LGBTQ plus community here in Taiwan? 接下来 ，Brian 呢、啊，他讲到当初之所以会开始跟我们台湾的性别平权社群有接触，是因为有在这个彩虹公民行动协会当志工，也就是他等一下提到这个很长的名字。Taiwan Rainbow Civil Action Association. 好，那为了要帮助我们社会大众以英文的角度来认识性别平权的议题，他当时呢主要就待在公关部门做事。后来因为今年这个同志游行呢，刚好就是这个协会负责筹划的，那他们又在志工群里面找人主持活动，所以 Brian 他就很积极主动提出申请，最后呢也成功入选，成为这次活动的主持人。那这边等一下呢，大家会听到他说 PR team， 这个 PR 是 public relations 的头两个字母 P 跟 R， 也就是我们讲的公关。好，那另外一个 talent search， 字面上直接翻译是才华搜寻，但其实呢，就是来表达找人才的意思啦。赶快来听他这段的分享吧。Well,、um, I started volunteering with the association, the Taiwan Rainbow Civil Action Association, which is the the group that organized this year's Pride back in probably about May or so of this year. And originally, I was working with the PR team because I wanted to help get more out, especially about Pride in English. That was my main goal at the time. Um, but eventually, they had a kind of talent search for people who were already volunteering to try and be a host for this year. So、um, I, I sent in my application and then had a meeting, and luckily got the chance. I got selected, so I got to host. And since at time of recording, it hasn't happened yet. Hopefully, it went well. <laughs> yes, as we are recording a little bit early, but talking in the past tense of it. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, again, congratulations, <laughs> and you. thank you for being such yeah a, a representative of the community and and sharing your knowledge in English and Chinese 
for the community to grow here in Taiwan. So as we kind of think about the future now, maybe the end of 2020 and into 2021, what do you want to be focusing on? 在这段访谈中呢 ，Brian 会讲到说啊，他对于未来的计划其实也是蛮有弹性的，没有说一定要怎么样走，就是看目前状况怎么样来一步一步调整之后的脚步。像他最近的拍片行程真的是越来越满，除了有参与演出前阵子很红的一部这个家庭搞笑喜剧以外，还有一些其他电影也有他的戏份，所以之后呢可能也会接更多戏，但同时他也希望可以继续拍影片跟大家分享。毕竟他也是花了很多心血、很多心力在这上面。如果就突然给他这样停掉不弄了，也是颇为可惜。那有兴趣的听众朋友，待会节目过后赶快搜寻 Brian to Taiwan， Brian B R I A N， 然后一个阿拉伯数字二，然后再一个 Taiwan。只要搜寻这个名字，就可以找到他的 YouTube 频道喽。Really, it's kind of an open book right now. I'm just waiting to see exactly where everything goes. You know, I'm, I've actually I've gotten a few bigger acting jobs over the last little while. I was on Wo the Popo Zama the Maka I, which is a pretty popular TV show. I'm pretty sure most people know about.、Um, and then I've gotten a couple other acting roles in in a few movies and things. So I'd like to do a little bit more acting, but at the same time, I'm probably going to keep focusing on my YouTube channel just because it seems like it would be a waste to put so much work into it and then just stop doing it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, congratulations on on the TV roles, and I believe our show will come out in March 2021. Is is have you heard that? I, I heard that it was going to be like early 2021. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure about dates yet, though. Yeah, same, same, same. But <laughs> congratulations with all that, and yeah, I hope you can keep up your YouTube channel and building your community. What is your YouTube channel name? Brian to Taiwan. Brian to Taiwan. All one word. Yeah, and the、Beautiful. number two. Okay, Brian to Taiwan. Great. We'll shout that out again at the end of the show. But do you mind then if we transition a little bit to your language development? Sure, definitely. Awesome. So you've been in Taiwan for now eleven years. Is that correct? Right. Eleven years, and that journey to what is Taiwan and your relation to Taiwan started when you were in high school. Is that correct? 接下来我们会讲到啊，其实，在 Brian 十五岁的时候就已经结下了跟台湾的缘分。怎么说呢？原来呀、啊，当时他班上呢有一个来自台湾的同学，那 Brian 每次呢都会去跟他聊天，跟他问说，哎，这个中文怎么讲？那个中文是什么？所以后来慢慢的也就开始认识越来越多有关台湾的文化，尤其是我们的一些流行文化，像是很红的电视剧啦，或是流行歌等等。他说呢，也就是从那个时候开始，一路苦读中文到大学。后来大学最后一年呢，刚好有个机会可以来台大当交换学生学中文。只是呢，本来为期一年的交换计划，却让他一来就回不去了。到现在已经迈入第十个年头嘞。看来啊，我们台湾的吸引力还真的是蛮强大的哦。Right, yeah. When I was 15 years old, um, I had a classmate in one of my classes who was from Taiwan, and I started asking her, "How do you say this in Chinese? How do you say that in Chinese?" And from there. I got to know more about Taiwanese culture, Taiwanese pop culture, especially music and TV shows. And from there, I started and kept learning Chinese through university. And eventually,、uh, my last year in university, I was able to come to NTU and study as an exchange student for a year. I love all that. And then you just never left. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So, in terms of kind of your Mandarin development. What kind of tips and advice would you say could help maybe our audience learn, whether it's for English or Mandarin or any language? 在这段访谈中，精通中英文的 Brian 要来跟大家分享一些他学外语的小 p e o p l 他认为呢，学外语很重要的一部分是我们周遭的学习环境。以他个人经验为例，在台湾学中文之前，其实就已经有在美国学了六年。好，但是在这六年里面呢，他真正学到肚子里面的，还不如后来在台湾当交换学生学得多。为什么嘞？因为在台湾，他除了有学校学的以外，还有平常到处都是中文的生活环境，帮助他把许多的东西都真的吸收进去。那另外一点，他提到的是啊，在台湾，我们很多当地人虽然说听外国人发音可能会有不对的时候，但他们不会小题大做去把你纠正出来，反而就只是稍微给你点一下，用正确的方式去重复一次你讲的，让你就是整个潜移默化这样，然后把正确的重复练习几次，知道说，哎，下次应该要这样子讲才对。
。好，那这边我们讲的稍微指点一下，让你知道怎么改正。这样子的英文说法就有点像 Brian 说的 "a nudge in the right direction"。赶快来听他这段分享吧。I think one big thing really is that I had learned Chinese for six years before I came to Taiwan, but I feel like the first six months that I was living here, I improved way more than I did over those six years. So one really big thing is the environment is really, really important. And then another is that I've noticed in Taiwan, at least,、um, if you say something and maybe you pronounce it incorrectly. Locals will generally like correct your pronunciation, not in a like direct way. They'll just repeat what you said the right way, so you can pay attention to that because it can help you internalize the correct pronunciation of things, especially when you're dealing with tones in Chinese.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more. Yeah, so that environment and then kind of listening to the repetition where native speakers will kind of help you say those words correctly,、Definitely. and very nicely done with that indirect approach. Right, it's <laughs> not is... like no, 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 no. That's not how you say it. It's just a, a Soft little nudge in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. So another question I love to ask here on NG Ingwen is: Do you remember any times you kind of maybe stumbled over some Mandarin words during your eleven years now with Mandarin? 接下来 ，Brian 会讲到啊，他曾经有一次把脚踏车轮胎的爆胎讲成堕胎，让中文课老师哭笑不得。虽然说当时呢，他也是给自己闹了一个笑话，却也是因为这样子，让他对这两个用法就特别印象深刻。毕竟我们总是要从错误中学习啊，对吧 ？Oh man, all the time. I make slip ups all the time. But the one that I always remember the most is probably from when I had just come here. I was going to my Chinese class at NGU.、Um, on the way to class, my bicycle tire blew, which in Chinese is 爆胎 But when I got to the class, I told my teacher, 不好意思，我刚刚在路上堕胎 and 堕胎 means an abortion. So <laughs> that was a little bit awkward. My teacher laughed real, real hard at that one, though. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is. I so that was probably what you're you're about. That was your first year here. Yeah, that was in my first year here. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, that is quite a story. So in terms of Your language development and now hosting Pride. Will you be speaking now in English and in Chinese? 在这段访谈中呢，他们会说到，虽然 Brian 他是中文、英文都通，但是在主持这个双语同志游行的时候，因为疫情的关系，参与活动的人没有太多外国的，所以主要呢，应该还是会以中文居多。但是他翻译的任务还不止这个哦。十二月在内湖的 TEDx 演讲，他也会担任口译员的角色。像去年的时候，他就是在观众耳边轻声把中文翻译成英文的那位 Whisper， 那位在耳边说悄悄话的人。没有啦，我夸张了，不是他真的在你耳边讲话，是大家都会戴一个耳机听 Brian 负责帮大家同步口译台上的人在讲的内容。那这边他说的 simultaneous interpreting 就是同步口译。Well, I'm not really sure exactly how we're going to separate things up because, as of yet, I haven't picked up the rundown for for this week. We're going to have our meeting on Wednesday, so I'll find out about that. But it's a possibility that I'll be doing some things in English, some things in Chinese. Probably more Chinese, I'm guessing, just because this year we don't have as many foreigners coming from abroad because of you know everything that's going on. Yeah, absolutely, and it's reminding me that we got to work together for last year in December on TEDx Nehu. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, TEDx Nehu, which will be happening again this year. Right, December twelfth. December twelfth. That's right. And you were a wonderful host, and you were listening to everything in Mandarin, and you were not only the English narrator in people's ears for when there was Mandarin speakers, but you were also kind of hosting the transitions. Where our partner Yuki、mm-hmm. would speak in Chinese, and then you would kind of follow along with her and translate into English for all our English-speaking audience. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I like doing simultaneous interpreting because it's kind of. I mean, I've, I've I've had so much experience doing it here since I've been here for eleven years. It's it's regular for me to have to help foreigners with something. So it's something that I get I got used to at a pretty early age. So I, I really enjoyed doing that at TEDx Nehu last year for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And so also thinking then about your YouTube channel. Are you speaking now in English mostly on your YouTube channel or in Mandarin Chinese? 紧接着 ，Brian 提到啊，他的 YouTube 频道影片多半都是讲中文。有时候呢，如果是希望其他国家人也可以收看的话，那就会改英文来呈现。
但不管是讲中文还是英文，他影片里呢都会亲自帮观众上中英文字幕，所以就算你影片是静音，也不用担心，一样可以收看哦。Most of the time, it's in Mandarin. Some videos I do switch to English, like especially if it's a topic that maybe I want to get to a more international audience. But regardless of which one I'm speaking, there's always English and Chinese subtitles at the bottom. So yeah, absolutely. And so, are you doing all of that editing work and that translation work? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I do know how how time consuming that can be.、It、definitely takes a lot of time and a lot of brain power for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Brian, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show today, and all the work that you're doing with Pride Month in October here in Taiwan, and your impact that you can have around the world. I wish you nothing but success with it. Thank you so much, John. And so, the last question I'd love to ask is: If you could go back and talk to a younger Brian, would there be any advice you give yourself about language or life? 访谈的最后啊，我们当然一样也要来问 Brian 布莱恩，他有没有什么建议想要给以前的自己呢？他说啊，其实以前真的做过蛮多蠢事，犯了不少错。如果可以回去改一改，当然是最好。但话说回来呢，我们还是一样老话一句：找到自己有热情、喜欢做的事，把它做好做满。好，那有时候呢，可能天不从人愿，事情不尽如人意，但船到桥头自然直，到最后啊，一切都还是会顺利的。嗯。There's a lot of bad mistakes I could go back and change, probably. But I think the the thing that I would tell myself mostly is just keep doing what you love and focus on that. And even though sometimes it may seem like things aren't going the way that you hope they would, eventually things will work out pretty much how you want. Yeah, it just takes that time, right?、It、takes、oh, that、yeah. time to to flow through. Beautiful. Well, where can people find your YouTube videos and maybe your social media? Um. All right. Well, on Facebook, IG, and YouTube, it's all Brian B R I A N. The number two Taiwan T A I W A N. Brian to Taiwan. All through social media. Yeah. So go give him a follow and check out a lot of his YouTube videos that he works so so hard on. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Brian. Well, thank you again for joining us today on NG Ingwen, and we will talk to you next time. All right. See everyone next time. Bye, everyone. Peace. Bye. All right. Well, that is our NG Ingwen show for today. We hope everyone enjoyed listening to that. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and now Spotify. You can search NG Ingwen, or you can search on IG NG English I C R T. And don't forget to tune in every Wednesday morning from six thirty to seven, and Wednesday night from nine to nine thirty. We'll catch you on the next episode. Bye bye. 好，那我们今天西平方的节目 NG 英文就到这边告一段落啦。感谢大家的收听，别忘了到 IG 搜寻我们的粉丝专业 NG 底线 English 在底线 I C R T。大家也要记得每周三早上六点半到七点，或是晚上九点到九点半，把广播调到 I C R T F M 一百，准时收听我们节目哦。那也欢迎各位上网搜寻西平方的攻棋不备课程，或者呢是到我们西平方的官网，多读读一些有关 NG 英文的文章，看看有哪些是可以吸收学起来的小配播哦。我们下周见了，拜拜。